Now, let's create this beautiful login system MERN application. So, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to open my MERN series folder and inside that, I'm going to create a new application of React. So, I'm going to open my terminal and here, I'm going to just say npx create React app to create a new React app and then I'm going to specify my React application name. So, I'm going to specify here MERN app. That's upon you, you can specify any name to this React application. I'm going to press enter. It might take a couple of minutes to create this project. Now, once the project is successfully created, you will have the MERN app folder inside your inside your MERN series. Now, you can notice here inside this console, I can execute npm start to start the development server. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to simply use this CD MERN app and start my development server. So, I'm going to first here CD and then specify MERN app. I'm going to enter into this MERN app directory and then I'm going to specify npm start. When you press enter, you can notice the app is now running on localhost 3000. Now, once you get the message compiled successfully, React will automatically open your development server in your default browser. You don't have to reload your browser to get the updated result. For example, let's see if I remove this learn React link from this application. I'm going to just simply back to my application and here I'm going to open my app.js file. In your source folder, you're going to have your component app.js. This is your main component, right? Inside this main component, I'm going to just get rid of this link from here. Let me just get rid of this link and save this file. Once I save this file and back to my browser, you can notice I don't need to reload this browser. React will automatically remove this link. I don't need to reload this browser. Now, I already explained the structure of this React application in the previous lectures. Let's start developing the login system. So I'm going to open the app.js and here I'm going to get rid of all these JSX. And instead of it, I'm going to create my own JSX here. So let me create here a division tag. And inside it, I'm going to create a new div with a class form section. Inside this div, I'm going to have my form. So I'm going to first create my title section. So I'm going to again create a division tag with a class title. And inside it, I'm going to create h3 heading tag and specify sign into your account. So we are going to first create a login form. So I'm going to specify here a title, sign into your account. Just out of that, just out of this div here, I'm going to create a div again and specify a class login inner form. Now you can notice here how I'm going to create this division tag. I just specify here dot and specify a class name. When I press tab, I'm going to have a division tag with a class name login inner form. Inside this login inner form, I'm going to create my form and I'm going to get rid of this action attribute from here and add here a method. Method is going to be post because we are going to post some data with this form. So method is going to be post. Just for that, inside this form right here, I'm going to create a division tag with the class form group. Along with that, I'm going to add another class here, form box. So to add two classes, I'm going to use dot here. You can notice when I press tab, I'm going to have two classes, form group and form box. Inside this div, I'm going to add my input text box. So I'm going to say here input. It is a type of email. But just for now, I'm going to leave this text and specify ID here. ID is going to be email. Then I'm going to specify my class name to it. So class name is going to be input text. That's about you, you can specify any name to this class. Just after that, I'm going to specify placeholder and placeholder is going to be email address. Let me save this file and open my browser. When I open my browser, you can notice I'm going to have the result something like this. And now let me just toggle my Visual Studio code on the right side of the screen. And now let me create my second input element. So just down here, just out of this division tag, right down here, I'm going to create another div with a class form group. Along with that, I'm going to add a class form box. And inside this form box, I'm going to add input tag. And this is going to be a type of password. But just for now, I'm going to specify here type text. Then I'm going to specify ID. ID is going to be password. And then I'm going to specify class name. Class name is going to be input text. I'm going to specify the same class name to this password as well. Just out of that, I'm going to specify placeholder. Placeholder is going to be password. 
Just for that, just out of this division tag right down here, let me save this file and then just down here, I'm going to create my submit file. So inside this form, just out of this division tag, here I'm going to create a form group. So I'm going to say here form group and inside this div, I'm going to create a new button. And to this button, I'm going to specify text login. Let me save this file. And now you can see how easy it is to create a login form in React application. Just out of that, once I have my simple login form, what I want, I want to make this form responsive. I'm going to use predefined styling means I can use bootstrap library here. Bootstrap library allows us to use the predefined style to your project. Let me show you. If I open a new tab here and if I search for bootstrap, then you can notice here, you're going to have here a website called getbootstrap.com. Just click on it. And here you can have the latest version of bootstrap. I'm using the current version 5.0. I'm going to click on this get started and use this bootstrap in my project. Using Bootstrap, I can use predefined styling in my project. For example, if I click on this component and click on these buttons, you can notice I have this predefined styling to these buttons. I can use all the styling with just these classes. So I don't need to add any CSS code to style my JSX. So what we are going to do is I'm going to click on this get started and right from here, you can find the CSS link. Just copy it and I'm going to paste it inside the public folder inside this index.html. Now there are different ways you can use Bootstrap in React application. You can download the Bootstrap in your node modules folder and import that CSS file or you can use the SAS file and using CDN you can import the Bootstrap. Just for now I'm going to use the Bootstrap link tag. So inside this index.html here at the top just out of this link tag here I'm going to first add a comment and say Bootstrap link and just down here I'm going to add my Bootstrap link like this. Just down here you can notice you have the bundle of bootstrap. This is the JavaScript bootstrap file. You need to copy this link as well and specify that at the bottom just before the closing body right here. Now let me just open my project and save this file. You can notice my project is now looks different because now we have some pretty fun styling to these components. Let me show you how you can change the styling of this button. If I open my app.js and inside this button, if I specify a class name btn, and when I save the changes, you can notice this will just remove the border from this button and I'm going to have the standard BTN button here. Inside your component, you can notice you have the button classes. You can notice here. And now if I want to specify this primary style to this button, I can just simply use this BTN primary class. So I can just simply specify here BTN primary. When I save the changes, you can notice I'm going to have the styling of the primary bootstrap button. So this library makes easy to develop the React application.